What's going on guys? This is Jaden from from Alien Soft and welcome back to your third computer graphics tutorial on circle drawing. Now, as promised in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how the midpoint circle algorithm is used in order to draw the octant of a circle. Now, before I go into that, I should tell you that similar to the midpoint line algorithm, if this is our pixel XP, YP, the current pixel, then this would be E and this would be SE, right? Now, notice that when we select the pixel E, our X value is incremented by 1, whereas our Y value remains the same. Whenever we choose the pixel SE, however, our X value goes up by 1, while our Y value goes down by 1. So the Y value is decremented at each interval wherever we choose SE. Okay? Alright, let's get that out of the way. Now, that. suppose you're given a circle to draw which have a center at 2, 2, and that's the center, and the radius is given by 10. Okay? For the time being, I want you to forget about the center, okay? Just think about the center to be 0, 0 as usual. Now, the radius is 10. As we all know, we need the values of D. And if you remember, the D start was 1 minus R, which is in this case 1 minus 10 equals minus 9. Our del E equals twice XP plus 3. And our del SC equals... 2 into xp minus yp plus 5. Okay? Now, this is in this case 0, 10. Right? So, this pixel is obviously glowed. Let us form a chart just like before. But before we do that, I almost forgot to tell you this, but you see, the circle has another property. We need a stopping condition, right? As to when and where we will be stopping our iterations. Well, you see, while we're in this octant, our y value is always greater than the x value. Upon this line, which has a slope of 1, our y and x value becomes equal. If the x value is greater than y value, that basically means we've crossed into this octant and we need not go any further. Okay? So, we keep up our iterations as long as our y value is greater than our x value. So, let's form the chart. We have our d, we have the comparison, we have our decision, our x coordinate, and y coordinate. Okay? Now, initially, d is minus 9, x is 0, and y is 10, right? Now, the comparison is obviously, in this case, d is less than 0, so we choose e, pixel e. And that means our x value goes up by 1, and y value remains the same. So that's 0 plus 1 equals 1, and 10 remains 10. Now, the next time when we increment our d value by adding twice x, twice xp plus 3 because we chose e remember that our xp in this case will always be the previous value that is to say 0 okay because this is the current the most recent coordinate we do not want to pick these values we always pick the previous values which are 0 and 10 okay bear that in mind that's a very crucial information so it's 2 into 0 plus 3 which gives us minus 6 D is still less than 0, we again choose E, X goes up by 1, Y remains same. Again, our D increments as uh, minus 6. Uh, looks like I made a pretty big mess. So it's minus 6 plus 2 into 1, because we're using this X value, plus 3. This gives us minus 1, and we still have d less than 0, which is e once again. So our x coordinate again goes up by 1, y coordinates remain the same. Okay, 
So once again, we have our d value as minus 1 and add to that 2 into xp, which is in this case 2, plus 3. That gives us positive 6. So d is greater than 0 in this case and we take the decision of sc. Whenever we take the decision of sc, our x coordinate goes up by 1 and y coordinate goes down by 1. So our new point is 4, 9. Now, since it's SE, this time we have to add twice xp minus twice yp plus 5. So that's 6 plus 2 into xp is 3 right here, yp is 10 right here, and add 5 to that. We get, let's see what we get, 7 into 14, that's 11, minus 3. Again, d is less than 0, which is e once again. x becomes 4 plus 1, 5. y remains the same. So, it's minus 3 plus 2 into xp, which is 4, plus 3. And that gives us 8. So, d is greater than 0, which is pixel s e. Our x coordinate goes up by 1, y coordinate goes down by 1. Our next increment is 8 plus 2 into xp minus yp plus 5. Okay? Now this gives us 5. d is greater than 0, which is se once again. x becomes 7, y becomes 7. We will try this one more time, so that's 5 plus 2 into 6 minus 8 plus 5. And this gives us 10, 6 minus 2, that's 2 into 4, so that's, I think it gives us 6, I'm not entirely sure, it doesn't even matter anyway. The main point is it will be positive. We'll be choosing SE once again. And this time our x value is 8, y value is 6. Condition not satisfied. See, y value has become less than the x value. That means we need to stop right here. Now, remember when I say that you're not supposed to consider the center at the beginning? Well, this is where you consider the center. Now that you have all the coordinates taken 0, 0 as center, remember the center value, 2, 2, add that to all the, add the abscissa value to all the x coordinate values and add the ordinate value to all the y coordinate values, okay? So what that simply means is it'll be 2, this will be plus 2, it will be 1 plus 2, it will be 10 plus 2, since both abscess and ordinate are 2, we just simply add them up, okay? That will give us the actual coordinates given our center at 2, 2. Oops. But of course, this one's not going to be executed because it has already passed into the next octant. So, that's about it, guys. That's how the midpoint circle algorithm works. You have your coordinates, all of them, in this chart. And that's basically it. That's how you use the midpoint line, uh, excuse me, the midpoint circle algorithm in order to draw the octant of a circle. And that's about it for this tutorial, and in the next tutorial, I'll be showing you a different way of going about the midpoint line algorithm. And as for now, that's it. See ya.